consume the ghosts, the man asserted that the tactic wouldn't work, startling him the man. Introduced himself as Lai Ida mockingly referring to Tsung as a schoolboy Lee promised that if Tsung survived their encounter they would meet again Lee's doppelgangers made an obscene gesture before vanishing causing Jang Sun to question where Lee was going suddenly a bright light struck Jang Sing's face and a man emerged from a totem pole he praised he sung bravery in combat skills and vowed that his power would serve Jiangshan meanwhile in a luxurious house. Fancy shut the lid on a coffin promising to cover it with a blanket the house had been destroyed, she explained so they would have to stay there, and it was time for Tsung to join them, she grabbed her coat deciding it was adequate she ordered a creature named Jiagugu to consume the coffin Diogli, a creature from Korean folklore known for its Larjamith devoured the case, suddenly she couldn't feel General Aju's soul and speculated if it could be another. General at play, summoning a ghost due to her ill feeling, she acknowledged the need for haste and encouraged Steel to proceed. She also urged Sung to persevere somehow. Meanwhile, in school Jackson walked closer to Tsung while saying, Shinji Imjin and Jiangan Shinjin is the 38th out of the 60 zodiac signs, and it was a year of the white ox Imjin is the 29th, and it was the year of the black dragon, and lastly Jianghian is the 27th, and it was the year of the white tiger. Jiangxing told him that it was a god's day at noon a god is born, and he wanted to see it to the end, but it was too bad because... He'll die by his hands now Tung sends Jiangxing's immense power far, surpassing the previous clown and realized he was. Not in a position to confront him abruptly a totem pole struck him sending him crashing onto a set of stairs. Despite the pain in one of his arms T Sung managed to sit up he realized he had narrowly blocked the attack with the aid of a flash of hope, he was grateful that the incident resulted only in an injured arm however looking at Zhang. Sung he knew the situation was perilous Jiangxing explained that he had hoped to wait until noon to absorb the full power of a god but Sung's unexpected growth and the imminent arrival of fancy required to change range of plans. Jang Sun proposed that if Tsung surrendered he would spare him the pain, but Tsung defiantly responded by challenging and dashing away he teased Jang Sun that running was a more suitable option than confronting him however. Tsung failed to notice an approaching totem, the totem summoned ghosts that struck him hard in the stomach causing him to crunch over in pain, he wondered why the flash of hope hadn't responded Jang Sun approached explaining that his Flash of hope might have saved him if it had developed further, but the outcome would have been the same his power was. The absorption of human souls and the soul he held was his partner General Ajibang's soul with this revelation he presented his complete transformation into the formidable General Ajibang, he was surprised to see the complete form of the great General Jiangxing in front of him feeling Audrey's pain and sadness Jiang soon sympathized assuming Adu must. Be morning Jang Sun promised his partner that their long-held dreams would be realized however Tsung spat on his face. In defiance Jang Sun was taken aback and angered, but Tsung merely laughed complaining about the information. Overload he requested Jang Sun to condense his speech into three lines enraged Jang soon grasped the totem pole and agreed to the three-line summary promising to defeat T. Sung Jang Sun attacked Tsung, but T. Sung urged himself to act quickly, but as Jang Sun's attack neared his body failed to move, and he was hit Jang Sing sidestepped and landed. Another punch causing his opponent to cough up blood, he swung again even though his foe was still in midair. Driving him down to the ground during his descent, he envisioned his younger self back in middle school when he first Joined the student council, he questioned his past decisions, why had he become a member of the student council? Then he remembered his disdain for bullies, he had thought that he could legally suppress them, and in the process earn some money reflecting on his hatred for bullies, he realized it stemmed from his interactions with Kyungsen who had tormented him relentlessly back in elementary school after his mother had abandoned him Kyungsen had seized every opportunity to tease him it infuriated him, but more than the teasing he couldn't bear the, the fact that his 
mother had left him overwhelmed by anger and sadness, he often found himself crying however the day he retaliated. Against Kyungsun was a turning point, it was his first act of violence, he fought back fiercely and upon hearing. Kyungsun's apology, he felt an unusual sense of relief in the midst of the current fight Jang Sun's continued. Onslaught brought him back to reality despite the countless hits he'd taken he couldn't recall why they were fighting. In the first place, the dizziness was disorienting him. Jang Tsung hoisted him up commenting that his strength had turned into a poison he wanted to end the fight quickly, but his opponent couldn't even stand Jiang Sing expressed. His discomfort with the one-sided violence and reassured his adversary that it was his destiny and karma. Without a pause, he dealt another punch, sending him flying into a wall. Hearing the word karma, he realized that violence had become an easy expression of his emotions and a tool for his survival. He agreed violence was his karma. He knew that he had been fighting to live a decent life, to lead a respectable existence despite trying his best. He understood inherent risk of his dangerous lifestyle and the inevitable fall that awaited him. He was also aware that eventually his life would hit an unscalable wall, he found it incredibly difficult to accumulate 100 million won. Exhausted from the endless fights and the struggle to survive he wished for an end, suddenly a voice called out to him. It was his middle school self bewildered, he stared at his younger image questioning if he was hallucinating his. Middle school self chided him for laying on the ground, while they were supposed to be fighting for 100 million one however he dismissively told his younger self to keep quiet expressing his belief that he couldn't win his younger self reminded him of his decision to live well without their mother and questioned where the confident Kim Tai Sung had gone, he responded that he was never strong he only pretended to be as he didn't want to appear inferior to anyone else, he also admitted that he was someone who Used to protest against violence reflecting on the day, he found violence refreshing, he remembered feeling good. Despite his tears, he confessed that his strong exterior was merely a pretense and he harbored deep regrets over his past decisions. If he had money or a normal family, he wouldn't be fighting at that moment, wouldn't have to pretend to be strong and wouldn't have to resort to violence to survive if his mother hadn't abandoned him or if he hadn't been born. His mother would have been happier, maybe it was time to give up suddenly his younger self punched him in the face, instructing him to stop wallowing in self-pity and pull himself together his younger self reminded him that it was too early to give up and he shouldn't accept his death so easily he questioned his younger self confused by the harsh words however his younger self placed a hand on his shoulder and asked him to listen he wasn't encouraging him to live. But to make a choice suddenly, he found himself standing in front of his old apartment door, a vivid flashback. Recognizing his childhood home, he saw his crying mother beside his younger self. It was the moment just before his mother abandoned him a memory he hadn't witnessed his mother held something shiny which she carefully inserted into. Him apologizing, she tearfully explained that this was all she could give him if she stayed with him he wouldn't live. Long he had to survive on his own, his younger self clarified that he couldn't live with their mother and she had left. To save him instead, she had left him a phantasmagoria. Now it was time for him to choose his younger self had shown him. The truth, but whether it would shatter him or motivate him to fight was up to him suddenly realizing that his body housed a phantasmagoria his mother had given him he pondered its significance, then a voice suggested that he should. Have told her because she hadn't known confused he asked who it was it was his mother. She looked at him calling him a ghostman then corrected herself and called him T-son. He was taken aback he asked if she could see him to which she replied that she could see a projection of him from the future. His mother remarked how much he had grown and asked if he was doing well and if he was healthy overcome with anger. He asked how she could assume he was doing well after. She had abandoned him as he spoke. He noticed that his body was starting to fade. His mother expressed regret at his imminent departure and her joy at seeing him grown up. He tried to express his feelings, but she reassured him that they would meet again if it was meant to be urging him not to cry with determination. He told her to wait and watch him. 
survive and live more confidently without her, his mother cried promising to see him again in the midst of the ongoing fight he caught Jang Sung's punch with one hand surprising both of them. A moment ago he had been at death's door. But now he was displaying unusual strength. He asked his mother if she was all right, if she was seeing something, if something was wrong. His mother, looking back with tears in her eyes, told the young him that she saw a donkey by well. Guys, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, comment part 2 in the comment section. Also, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and like the video. Thank you for watching, and see you next time again. V him from the side he turned back and saw the clown man protecting Jang Su. The man referred to him as a toddler and asked him about his sudden growth. He retorted that the man had been spouting nonsense since he had aged and laughed, but he was aware that the clown man in front of him was extremely powerful. Suddenly Jang Sim ordered them to stop startling them. Both Jang Sing addressed him as the child of prophecy and stated that even though he had done well to hold out he should already know that there was no hope, so he should surrender. He declared that he would not surrender, but then notice. Someone climbing onto one of the windows, a student clung to the outside of the window, crying tremulously Jang Sun, explained that the student's life could be in danger and that the fate of the student was up to him, expressing hope that he would make the right choice. Jinxing then reminded him that he was a member of the student council, but he just laughed stating that whether or not the student fell was not his problem, and that even if the student did fall from there, he wouldn't die, he then noticed. The student falling, he immediately turned around and jumped to catch the student landing safely Yang Soon. Remarked that he couldn't believe he had managed to catch the student, and that his movements were extremely quick teasingly adding that he must have been. Worried as a member of the student council, he cast the student aside and retorted that it wasn't the case he had. Rushed over there solely to retrieve the falling wallet, he then told them not to act as if they hadn't seen it and that he had obtained money and benefits Jackson laughed remarking that he was bold but considering his predicament it. Seemed he was quite anxious suddenly one of his arms began moving on its own jang, soon asked him teasingly if he understood his situation and advised that if he didn't want to die, it would be better for him to surrender, but he merely lunged at Jenksing to attack telling him to stop spouting nonsense and that once he broke one of his faces, the disturbance would be over so why should he surrender unfortunately before he could strike Jenksing the clown man. Punched him sending him crashing to the ground, the man asked if it was his brain or Duxini acting foolishly and how he could be oblivious to his predicament as a mask slipped onto his head, summoning masks, the clown man stated that the weight of karma that he would carry on his back had been laid out as he put on the large clown mask and slowly approached him he promised to ensure he would die while having fun no matter how much he resisted his fate meanwhile. Outside of Fancy House, there were a lot of evil ghosts and they were heading inside Fancy Home she was talking with. T son on the phone when she felt a lot of evil spirits outside, making her wonder what it was then he saw the talisman fading away from her door, she stand up and told Soong that the delivery is there and he should cheer up. On his own, then she hung up even though T Sung tried to stop her, her door exploded and the evil spirits barge. Inside her house, she furiously grabbed his fan and called the evil spirits mischievous people the evil spirits attack her, but she just swings her fan and hit the evil spirits while telling them not to try to mess with her a totem. Pole come inside her house while laughing and asking her what she was talking about when she just going to give her a hug because she was so happy. To see her again, then she asks Fancy how can she refuse to say hi to her as it was been eight years since they saw each other, and if didn't she miss her fancy knows that on her side is the female general, then she replied that she don't remember her and told her not to pretend to be close and just get lost, but it just laughed and told her to wait a little bit while it's slowly changing face, it successfully changed its face and shoutingly told her that on the basis of order serve as a tribute for General Yo to which the evil spirits bowed and understood the possessions. 
come out of the people's bodies, and the evil ghosts fly toward the general Yo's mouth, the other evil spirits also fly. Toward Yo, she told her that she remembered that Yo is Jackson Pear, the male general controlled human beings. While the female general controlled ghosts, she remembered that the left face of it is giving the commands the middle. One is controlling them, and the right face absorbs the ghosts, manipulates them, and lastly the main body fights directly. Yo laughed and told her that she remember it so well then asked her if she also remembered the scar on her face. She replied yes and asked you if she also remembers that time she ripped off the skin from her four eyes, Yo replied yes and asked her how can she forget it Yo told Fancy that it was so nice to see her like that and asked her if she even knows she has been looking for her for the past eight years because she always remember the humiliation she carved on. Her face Yo also told her that she doesn't know what kind of tricks she is doing lately but she'll get rid of her and take the body of Heaven Yo's body slowly becomes big while asking Fancy if she remembers that she had come out of the Guardian Post, and there are hundreds of ghosts within her right now, so it'll be different from eight years ago, Theo. Completely changed to Daibing Yisen Hyun form Daibing is top in the ranking system in Korea, and Hyung means L older. Brother in Korean Yo told Fancy that today she'll die but Fancy just opened his fan while laughing and asked Yo who do. She thinks she was then, she reminds you that her body is the reincarnation of Margaret, and he was the fancy Mary. Meanwhile in the school, the clown man and Soong were facing each other, the man told Jang Sun that he'll take care of it. And he will minimize the damage to civilians, because they are the resources that will give strength to the ability of his third face, Jang Soon replied that. It was nice and wondered if shall they take a look at the ability of clown and how to get rid of Tissun, the man said. Right away, but he was surprised that Tsung vanished and punched him while asking him who is he to decide on his own, but the man avoided it. Tissung punched the man continuously while telling him that if he'll shake his mouth once more he'll hit him for sure so he should shut up and bring it on the man looks at him while telling him to. Look at how rough his mouth is then he punches T's son, but he bends down in time to avoid it Tsung grabbed the sand on the ground while telling the man that they were not in sync and he don't know if it was memories or something then he throws the sand at the man while shouting fatal throwing sand the man coughed while he was telling him that he was such a coward and if you want he can. Do it too then he jumped to attack him but the man changed to Fancy's face and told him to stop because it was her he. Stops in confusion and looks around searching for the clown while asking Fancy why is she there she replied that. She came there to help him since he working hard. He furiously can't believe that the man disappeared in the midst of. The sand she asked him what is he looking for and he replied that there is a clown with a mask on she punched him hard in the stomach while asking if it's that one he coughs blood in then the man changed back to the clown man who's saying that it was chapter one fleeing the man told him that the place has already become him and fleeing is a type of transplantation it was because he is conceited by believing in memories then the man warned him to pull himself together because from now on he'll have fun then he surrounded him using his clown skill chapter 2 o clown he laughed and told him that he never imagined five adult men will be cowardly beating a school kid the man attacks him. While telling him that the now who throws sand is talking about fair play, he blocks the attacks used using his hand and when he was going to attack back, he stopped when he saw a student crying asking him if he was out of his mind and not to hit her, but the student changed to the clown man and punched him while teasingly telling him that he has. Been fooled again, he hit the other student behind him, he looked back at the student who was confused asking who is. The general then he remembers that it was the student who fall to the building, then he punched him breaking the mask. Away while asking him if he thinks he'll be fooled again, the student fell to the ground crying and saying that it hurt he. Was stunned that the student was real suddenly the clown man appeared behind him and told him that he just punched. 
his friend, then the man kicks him which sent him flying, he shakingly shouted that it hurt then a lot of hands grab him down before he can get up and pinned to the ground, the man asks him if he thinks it'll work if he was just a brave being, and it was pathetic that he was the vessel of God the man takes off his mask and told him that he'll tell him. One thing because he feels bad for him, he told him that Huario had or fancy is using him making him surprise the man. Explained that what fancy wants is his power as a god, and using its power she wants to kill kill many shamans it. Breaks down the casualty, the utopia she thinks of to create a chaotic world, and she is the villain the man asks him if he knows what is going on and told him not to fight for no reason and surrenders smoothly so if he listens carefully. He'll spare him but Tsung told the man to shut up, and he have already tried to kill him several times, then he asks him. Why now he wants a settlement when they dragged him to their thing, and he asks who was the bad guy, and who is playing politics while he was trying to free. Himself the man was surprised that he using the power in his current position T. Sung grabbed the man's neck and face while reminding the clown man that he also threatening the students, and in his eyes, it was the same as being a villain. Then he pinned down the two men who were holding him before the man launches toward him while saying that it was a failure and he kick him using his clown skill edge, but he was surprised that T. Sung catch his feet T. Sung laughed and told the man that he mean if both sides are bad guys, he'll take the side of the person who gives him money, he looked at the man smiling and commented that his hair was a bit dry, he didn't know what caused it, yet he suddenly felt refreshed the man no notice the mark on his face, and wondered what it was the man also realized that the energy was calmer than before he speculated whether Tsung had become accustomed to being possessed during Babel regardless, this was his territory now he activated his chapter 2 skill again, and charged to attack Tsung furiously swearing that T. Sung wouldn't disrespect him anymore just as he was. About to use his other clown's skill his two clowns were struck down, he looked back bewildered not realizing that. T. Sung had materialized in front of him Tsung then punched him in the face, shattering the mask thrown to the ground. He sat up clutching his bleeding nose the soon lunged at him warning him to clench his teeth he referred to him as Tidikbigi a term for an earthenware bowl used for cooking or storing stews he punched him hard in the face causing him to cough up blood and vanish this left T. Sung perplexed he scratched his head in confusion for he had believed the man to be real the man attempted a surprise attack from behind but T. Sung retaliated before the man could land a hit as he had anticipated this figure was also an illusion however since since he had identified four such apparitions he had found the real one he approached the man and told him that he no longer had any allies so they should fight fairly a seance an attempt to communicate with spirits was a phenomenon in which ghosts possessed a human body this was commonly Referred to as Shin Aram shamans borrow the power of ghosts through this phenomenon, and it wasn't a skill that just anyone could master one needed to be able to control spiritual entities like ghosts, and such individuals were. Rare one in ten thousand, if a ghost entered the body of a person who lacked these spiritual abilities their form would collapse and their mind would be corrupted a condition known as being ghosted maintaining a complete form and Mind through a strong body was possible only for spiritual beings however this was merely a prerequisite in order for spiritual beings to gain strength from ghosts through Shinram, they needed to engage in endless practice to harmonize. With the spirits this process could take years even decades and some individuals never mastered it in their lifetime. Tisun, who couldn't even see ghosts left him wondering how he could reach that level with such mediocre talent he knew. That even in the heat of battle their power levels were converging if Tsung was destined to become a god he wondered. If that was a hint, but Tsung merely laughed flipping him off and asking why he was zoning out he questioned whether. His rock fist wasn't good enough the man stuttered a response which confused he sung the man shouted asking why someone. As powerful as Tsung would assist someone as frivolous as fancy he told Tsung that he didn't realize how. 
perilous and foolish the path he had chosen was T. Sun retorted that the student council had been bothering him. As he rummaged through his pocket, he pulled out some money and showed it to the man. He asked the man if he recognized who was on the bill. The man replied that it was Shin Sane Dang Tsung confirmed this declaring that she was. His best friend, he explained that he had been abandoned by his parents when he was ten years old since then he had. Chosen his own path and money had become his most loyal companion, he was on the verge of earning a hundred million sell. Whether it was becoming a god or doing something else, he was willing to do anything for money that was the only thing he needed in the path he had chosen the man realized that Soong's entire motivation for everything he did. Was money, he angrily asked Tsung, if he was willing to die for it, he demanded to know if that was the reason Soong had. Sided with fancy calling Tsung an idiot, but T. Sung merely scoffed, denying the accusations and calling the man a punk. In return, the man driven by rage activated his land skill and declared Tsung dead, then they began to fight on. The sidelines Jangsem who had been watching determined that peaceful negotiation was no longer an option he hadn't intended to keep Tisun alive in the first place, he planned to feast on Tisang's soul, still he was surprised. That Tisung continued to grow stronger, he contemplated what it would be like if a god were to be born, and he believed. That when the time came that power would be his suddenly someone called out his name from behind Aju emerged bleeding and apologized to him, she had been deceived by Fancy. She informed Jensen that Fancy had grown much stronger over. The past eight years she told Jang Sun that this was the end, and she hoped that he would succeed in his endeavors even. If she were to die there, she had moved out of personal resentment, as Audrey spoke Fancy materialized behind her she. Told Jang Sun that she should have listened when he tried to stop her, she accepted her impending death and implored Jang Sing to absorb her soul and avenge her before she could say anything else. Fancy thrust her fan into Audrey's neck, killing her fancy, then coldly told Audrey to shut up. Jang soon referred to Audu as his master and asked if she was gone. He then started to cry, calling out. For his master, this startled both Tsung and the clown man. Tsung stared at the weeping Jangsum, questioning why he was. Suddenly crying, the clown man seized this opportunity and reactivated his chapter 2 clown skill. His doppelgangers rushed at the surprised Tsung, but Tsung laughed and declared that their tactics wouldn't work anymore. He decided to confront all. Five of them at once, however, he only saw four of them, which left him wondering where the fifth was he didn't notice the original approaching from behind. Suddenly, the man appeared behind Soong, catching him off guard, he quickly turned. Around wondering if the man had transformed into sand again him, before he could react he was flung into the sky. The clown's doppelgangers leaped onto the clown's arms, which were stretched out in a celebratory gesture they launched themselves at Tsung simultaneously landing a heavy kick in his stomach, they shouted third place as. They attacked the remaining doppelgangers, jumped onto the clown's back, and lunged to Tsung they looked at. Him announcing fifth place and punched him in unison, causing him to fall to the ground blood spewing from his mouth the clown man was satisfied. He told Tsung that they had been at it for a long time, so it was time to wrap things up Tai Sung. However asked him how he could be so relaxed when he had deliberately allowed himself to be hit in order to build momentum for his fall the man activated. His clown skill level 3 replying that he needed to be at least the good to be considered as a vessel for a god he urged he sung to enjoy the fight, he revealed a huge bamboo stick filled with weapons, he used his clown skill salpin to gather all the weapons around him, then he tapped the ground forcefully causing the weapons to fly into the air. As they hovered above him, the man told Soong that if he performed well he would live, but if he didn't he would die he. Raised the gathered weapons skyward and playfully told Soong to test his fate as Soong plummeted towards the sharp blades. Pong remembered being asleep before he was roused by a noise, prompting him to sit up and question his mother about her. Actions which startled her, his mother flustered inquired whether he was awake and why he wasn't sleeping longer with. K. 
concern he asked his mother if something was amiss, or if she was feeling unwell she explained that she had seen a goblin. An occurrence that happened from time to time and reassured him not to worry urging him to return to sleep she. Assured him everything would be all right by morning the following day his mother vanished facing abandonment and neglect from his peers due to his lack of money t sung resolved to live a splendid life independently a determination that included not seeking out his absent mother he confronted the sharp weapons getting struck multiple times however he still squared up to the flames he was emitting when he hit the weapons a bright light erupted from them leaving the possessed students in jenksing stunt the flame gradual faded away the man stepping on the sharp Weapons told T Sung. It was the end regardless of T Sung's struggles, he was fated to die, and the god's vessel would finally vanish. Suddenly Tsung sees the man surprising him and pronounced a deaf flag. It was a trope often seen in movies. Games and cartoons indicating a character's imminent demise through specific actions, Tsung attacked the man causing him to panic unsure if T. Sung had a weapon a powerful punch to his face led to an explosion of the weapons. The man's doppelganger apprehended him questioning whether his decision had been made in a fleeting moment of hope. Tsung retorted that regardless of the man's actions, he would still defeat him the man laughed suggesting they end. Their conflict once, and for all then the man employed his clown skill the fear of clowns, but Jang soon intervened. Instructing him to stand down due to their limited time, Jang Sun transformed his face and declared a top-down order. Instructing the ghosts inhabiting the students' bodies to offer themselves